broke my freaking heart. Feeling a little bit burnt out on the manga romance at the moment. Wait, what? Give me something good. I think I actually have the first manga ever that I'm giving one star. Bitch, what? Like, what do you mean? This title is a mouthful. Hello, hello, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're gonna to be starting on a very exciting reading challenge. This reading challenge is highly inspired by my friend Gavin over here on YouTube. I'll have his video linked down below that inspired me to do this. But basically this video is going to be me attempting to read 24 different manga within 24 hours. I mean, in this video, I'm gonna be reading all kinds of manga. I'm gonna be reading manga that's part of my favorite series. I'll be reading a lot of first volumes in a series as well as a lot of standalones. What I ended up doing was I put every single manga title on this little like spin the wheel thing so that the spin the wheel will choose which order I read them in because I thought it would be more fun that way. But I will include timestamps down below if there's different reviews that you want to skip to or certain manga that you're more interested in hearing my thoughts on. So timestamps will be included down below and this entire vlog will be spoiler free for all of these manga series by the way. So basically the idea for this is once I start reading my first manga I will go ahead and start the timer and the hope is that I'll be able to get through all 24 of these books before this timer hits 24 hours. I mean, I think it's gonna be pretty realistic for me to do this in 24 hours because a lot of these volumes I feel like I can probably get through in less than an hour Then I also do have a few different mangas in this stack that are a little bit on the thicker side And I think these collections actually have about two volumes in each one of them But I'm still gonna be reading these as if they're one volume for this video They're just a little bit on the lengthier side We love an extra challenge and you know ever since getting into manga in early 2022 I've been wanting to do something like this and what better time to do 24 manga in 24 hours in the year of 2024. So let's go ahead and spin the wheel and figure out what we're gonna be reading first. Moment of truth, let's pick the first three manga that I will be reading this morning. As you can see, I made this cute little spinning wheel. These have all of the titles of the 24 manga that I'm gonna be reading for this video. So let's go ahead and spin for the first one. <gasps> I'm so excited, what are we gonna get? What is it gonna be? <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so On or Off is our first pick. Okay, so On or Off is gonna be the first manga that I'll be reading for this video. You know what's ironic is I think this one is actually a webtoon, but on the back it does say Manga's Boy Love. I don't know, I got this one from the library. I just saw it and I thought that it looked cute. So I was like, yeah, let's go for it. But this one is in color, which is not typically like manga. I think it actually is more like a webtoon, but because it's a boy's love, I'm excited. I think it looks so cute. Like I love this cover. I've been seeing this cover around. And so this will be the first one we're reading. Okay. Let's go ahead and spin the wheel again and see what the second one's gonna be. <gasps> oh. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be real account. I'm so excited. Okay, hyperventilation. Let's do it. Okay, this one is once again another boys love manga. I think, oh my gosh, this one's in color too. Dude, what are the chances? <laughs> I swear, I only included a few in this stack that I was like, yeah, these are manga, but they're also in color. So I believe they might be manhwa. Like, they might be Korean. I'm not totally sure. But this one is another boys love. I think it involves a high school reunion. I'm not entirely sure, but wow. <laughs> I'm just pulling all the boys love right away. Okay, let's pick the third one. Let's see what's it gonna be. Okay, what he who doesn't believe in fate. Okay, I'm excited for this one. This one's called what he who doesn't believe in fate says and this is volume one This is one that I actually just picked up on a recent trip that I took to Seattle So I'm really excited to check this one out and this is definitely one of the shortest manga in this whole collection So that's pretty cool that I'll be able to get this one done. What an exciting three manga to be starting with Let's go ahead and get this video started Stop. 
Okay, hello, it's time for my first update because I've finished the first three mangas for this video and I'm at about an hour and nine minutes in, which I feel like I'm making great progress so far that I've already read three in the first hour and nine minutes. So the first one that I finished is this one called On or Off. And as expected, uh, while reading this, I discovered that this one does take place in South Korea. I mean, it takes place in Seoul, the city, and he talks about his military service. So like, I I'm confused on whether or not this would be considered manga or not because it does say manga on the back and then it says this is published by Tokyo Pop. So I'm like, I'm not really sure there. I'm sure the manga experts could like let me know if this is actually manga or not. This one ended up being just okay for me. You know, it's definitely an office romance where this guy is like a really big CEO guy. And then the main guy that we're following, he's trying to like get approval on this project that he's working on from him. And the power dynamics were a little bit, I don't know. It was a little bit uncomfortable for me at times just because this guy is so powerful and the way he treated him was a little bit like, ugh. I was just getting like Christian Grey vibes from his character and it wasn't my ideal romance. And so I think I'm probably giving this one around three stars. It took me about 39 minutes to read this one and there was like a lot of smut scenes like unexpectedly so I was like oh my gosh like this one first thing in the morning like okay and then the second one that I ended up reading was hyperventilation. This one is another boys love manga. This one's a standalone as far as I'm aware and this is another one that it says that it's manga boys love on the back and it's published by Tokyo Pop as well but this is another one that I think the characters are Korean. This one I was able to read this in literally like less than 10 minutes because it just flies. There's barely any dialogue dialogue on the page. Most of this story is literally just smut. Like, I don't even understand. It's like these two boys who meet at a high school reunion and like it has a couple flashbacks to when they were actually in high school together. But like, there's just no depth to these stories or these characters other than the fact that one of the boys, he had a hole in his lung when he was in high school. And so he got really like bullied a lot and mocked for that. And then it's like the other boy was like really athletic and really hot. And so it's like the other boy giving him some attention at the reunion like years later. And he's like, I always had a thing for you. And then it's just like smut between them. Like there's literally nothing more to the story. I mean, I was able to read it very quickly, but like I didn't feel a single thing while reading this. Like it's literally just a few flashback scenes and like a lot of smut. So like that was it. And so I think I'm giving this one two stars. Like it just really wasn't my thing. And then the third one that I just read is what he who doesn't believe in fate says. This is volume one. And I read this in about a little over 20 minutes. This one is really interesting because we're following this guy. He can see a red string of fate between people. Like he can see when people are like meant to be together, but he has like the biggest crush on like his best friend like this girl who's his best friend but he's concerned because he doesn't see like their string of fate they don't connect you know and so he goes to this fortune teller like this lady who's a fortune teller with this girl and the fortune teller tells the girl that like she's supposed to be with someone who's like around her age and who's like super athletic and like born in the summer and all of those things are like him you know like they all point to him so then she's like thinking in her head like oh my gosh we're supposed to be together and then he's like yes this is my chance like he wants to be with her even though he doesn't think fate is destined for them to be together. But then the ending of this, oh my gosh, there was like a bit of a plot twist at the end that I was like, oh shit, okay. Because I was thinking this was probably gonna be like two stars, maybe three stars. Like I'm not a huge fan of the art style in this and the characters just feel a little bit like one dimensional so far, but that ending, like I'm intrigued actually. So like I might actually pick up a second volume of this in the future just to see where it goes. So I think I'm gonna give this one around a three and a half star. Like it's not a favorite, but it was interesting. Like it was definitely more interesting than these other two. That's for sure. Gosh, okay, time to spin the wheel again. I'm hoping to get something more like horror or thriller or something different this time because I'm kind of feeling a little bit burnt out on the manga romance at the moment. Okay, so let's spin to see what is the next one gonna be. Ooh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, we have the promised Neverland. Okay, you see, this is great because this one, from what I understand, is like a horror fantasy book. I don't really know anything about the promised Neverland other than I have a lot of friends who really enjoy this and who always talk about how like creepy and weird and interesting it is. So this is exciting. This is definitely a change of pace. This is exactly what I'm looking for right now. All right, let's spin again, see what the next one's gonna be. I thought we were gonna get blood on the tracks, god damn it. Okay, we have A Home Far Away. Okay, this is one that I am excited to read. This is A Home Far Away, but this is another boys love romance manga. <laughs> Apparently the universe just wants me to read all of the boys love this morning. This is another one that I don't really know too much about this. I think this one's actually a standalone, but I could be wrong. But this one also says it's mature. So there's probably, I'm expecting that there's gonna be a lot of smut in this one too. So we'll have to see what I'm signing myself up for. Okay, and let's spin one more third time to see what the next one's gonna be. <gasps> Ooh! 
We got the Summer You Were There Volume 1. Okay, this is very exciting because yes, this is another romance manga. I swear, I put a ton of different variety on this list and the wheel is just choosing for us to read a lot of romance this morning. But the Summer You Were There, this one I'm excited about because it's actually a female, female romance. So that's why I've been excited to read this one. It's about a shy high schooler. Ooh, it says she loses herself in writing and crafting a novel she never intends to show anyone. I don't know, I think it could be a good time. So that's very exciting. I'm going to start with these three next. I'm currently doing some reading sprints on Patreon right now. And so I'm gonna go ahead and jump into The Promised Neverland as my next read. Let's go. Yeah, I'm feeling anxious, baby, I don't know. But I got only now, my baby, I don't wanna know. Who do you mean? The more they turn on my life, where it goes. Moon and I dig to me, I miss so. Now I'll your job. I'm feeling anxious lately, I don't know. Be gonna eat or I go, baby, think I gotta go. Now I need to know my thing, I can't get shit, I'll take it slow. Moon and I dig to me, I miss so. Yeah, now I'll your job. It's you. The more they talk, and I'll hear you. I'll travel to the moon. The upper is so do not go. Yeah, it's true. Okay, hello. It has been a couple of hours. I've been reading for three hours and six minutes at this point, and I have finished the next three volumes. These volumes definitely took me a little bit longer to read, but I'm really excited to update you about it because The Promised Neverland Volume 1 was five stars for me. I absolutely loved this. This one, all I really knew about it was that it would follow these children who all live together at this orphanage, and then I just heard that it's kind of like fantasy horror vibes, and I didn't really know anything else about this. All of the kids, you know, like, they refer to this one woman as their mother. Like they call her mom. She's kind of like the caretaker at the orphanage and she's responsible for their well being. But there's a lot of like weird things happening at this orphanage. Like the kids are only at this orphanage until they're 12 years old and then they get sent away from the orphanage and the kids never knew like where those 12 year olds are actually going. They actually have like no connection to the outside world and like they're not allowed to leave the orphanage. Like they all have to stay there. But then it's really interesting because right at the start of this, like literally 30 pages into this manga, they find out the truth about what happens to these kids when they leave the orphanage and it is very disturbing and very horrific and like wow what a way to kick off the series like this was an action-packed volume because you find out the truth about what's going on at this orphanage almost right away I mean I don't want to say what's actually happening in this book because I don't know what's really considered a spoiler with this but this was so entertaining I'm already attached to these characters I'm already like loving the writing style the way that it's written is very interesting and I love this concept like children at an orphanage who are trying to figure out now a way to escape because there's some really shitty things and you know creepy things going on at this orphanage like I am here for these vibes This one took me about 45 minutes to read because I ended up tabbing quite a bit in this and I was just having a great time with it So I'm very excited that the promised neverland is my first five star for this video And then after that I ended up reading a home far away This one is another boys love romance manga But this one was a lot heavier and more deep than I was expecting it to be I mean this one took me about an hour to read because this one is a little bit more dense than than I was expecting as well. I mean, with some manga, it's very easy to just fly through it, but every now and then you'll get ones like this where there is just a lot of text on each page. And there was a lot of really beautiful, like deep conversations happening in this book. Something that I liked about this is that it's taking place in the 1990s in Texas. And we're following these two young boys, Hayden and Alan. And Alan is a teenage boy in this. I believe he's about 17 years old. And then Hayden is in his early twenties. And Alan's family is extremely religious. Like his parents are really religious to the point where it's really been almost like a burden on his life because every little thing that he does like they think that he's sinning and he also has this condition where he has like really high blood pressure so he has to be on a certain kind of medication because once he starts bleeding he can't stop bleeding and both of these characters have experienced a pretty significant amount of trauma like there is a lot of trigger warnings for this book in particular like I was really surprised by the amount of violence and like awful things that were happening in this. Like I was just shocked. Like, this story is really heartfelt. It's really beautiful. And it's one of those endings that I personally found to be a little bit shocking and surprising. Like I just wasn't expecting the story really to go in that direction. I don't know how I feel about this because for the first like half of this, I thought for sure I was gonna give this five stars. Like it was just so beautiful. It was really hitting me. But then in those last, like the last half of this book, I was just kind of like, oh my gosh, like the story just kind of veered off in a way where I wasn't really expecting it to go in that direction. And I feel like some of it felt a little 
little bit like over the top with the dramatic flair of like things that were happening. I was like, okay, like, I don't know if I needed all of that, but I think I am gonna end up giving this one four stars. I'm just really impressed by the story. Like the writing was so good. These characters were so good. Like I'm gonna be thinking about this manga for a long time. And then the last one that I just read was The Summer You Were There. This was the cute like female, female manga romance between these two girls in high school. And this one was a very quick read. I think I read this in about 15 minutes because it's like so easy to just fly through this. So these two girls are in high school and one of the girls is a writer and she has written this book that the other girl gets her hands on it. And so she reads her book, but she's like embarrassed and ashamed because she never wanted anybody to read the first draft of this book that she wrote. But then the girl's like so obsessed with her book. She's like, oh my God, like you're amazing. Like you're such a great writer. Like I need you to write another book immediately. And this girl's like, um, I never intended to write another book. Like this is it. And so she's like, well, if you need some inspiration, maybe we can date each other. And so it's gonna be how they're like, fake dating each other throughout the summer so that this other girl has inspiration for her next book potentially. But throughout this whole story, you know, the girl who's like our writer here, she's like carrying this burden of like knowledge where she's like, oh my God, if she found out the truth about me, she wouldn't want to be around me anymore. And she thinks she has like this really dark past. And then it's not until the end of this volume that you find out more about like why she's been saying that. It just kind of feels a little bit over the top and like dramatic just for my taste in romance. Like, I don't know. And this does feel a little bit like cringy high school romance. It's not exactly my thing. I think I'm giving this one like two and a half stars. Like it was just okay But like I personally don't think I'll be continuing on in the series And so yeah, that's where I'm at But I'm really excited to spin the wheel again and figure out what I'm reading next So let's go ahead and spin this wheel and see what's gonna be next for me to read <laughs> Yeah it's Parasite! Oh my gosh. Okay, so the next one is gonna be Parasite, which I am so excited. Like, this is definitely one of my most anticipated mangas for this entire video because look at this creepiness. All I know is that it's body horror in this book. I think it's aliens. Yeah, it says they arrive in silence and darkness. They descend from the skies. They have a hunger for human flesh and they are everywhere. They are parasites, alien creatures who to survive must invade and take control of a human host. So it's like aliens, there's body horror, I'm so excited for this. Like, I literally can't wait. Oh my gosh. What else do we got? <laughs> okay, I hear the sunspot. Okay, so next is gonna be I Hear the Sunspot. This one is a book that I actually, I tried to read this a while ago and I realized that I didn't get the first volume in the series. Like I accidentally started reading a book that was like later in the series because I had thought that it was the first one, but this one is actually volume one in the series. I can't remember if this one's a romance or not between these two boys, but in this book, we're following a character who has a hearing disability. And I've just heard really great things about I Hear the Sunspot. So I'm really excited to give this one a shot and let's spin it for one more third time and see what we're gonna get. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> yes, happiness. Oh my god. So happiness volume one is one that I've been highly, highly anticipating as well because this is the same manga author as Blood on the Tracks, I believe. And this is one that I've been so curious about because this is another series that he has where it's like vampires. There's like vampires in this world. I don't really know too much about it, to be honest. Like I really don't know too much about this. I think right now we're probably gonna get started on some dinner. I might try to watch something with my sister tonight. I'm not totally sure, but I will let you know once I've started. Yeah, yeah, you 
웃으면도 충분히 행복해 미소가 지어져 yeah. 오늘은 한 편의 동화를 썼음 해 Okay, hi, it is the next morning. I've now been reading for four hours and 57 minutes and I finished the next three volumes. You know, I was actually going to try and read all three of these last night, but instead, last night I ended up watching that show, The Traders, with my sister for like three hours because we're both currently so obsessed with that like reality game show, The Traders. It's so much fun. And so instead, last night I only ended up reading Parasite and then this morning I finished these two. And so Parasite, it took me about an hour to read this one. Like, I don't know if it was just because my brain was like literally scrambled eggs last night and after reading seven volumes in one day like my brain was just done but this one's also a bit on the lengthier side and this one I will admit it wasn't exactly what I was expecting I mean I thought this one was gonna be a lot darker and more disturbing than it ended up being I mean the beginning was definitely hooking me because the beginning had some of the most grotesque body horror that I've read in a long time like it was disgusting it was freaking me out it was like the idea of a little worm like crawling into your ear or or like the idea of a little worm just like going up your nose like and like the body horror started off very creepy and very disturbing and I was like oh my gosh like this is gonna be a new favorite like I can feel it but then quickly after that like I don't know the tone of the book started to change and it kind of felt a little bit more silly I guess like I don't know because like the alien that gets in this boy like we're mainly following this young boy who's like 16 and the alien goes into his arm and like into his hand and the alien can like talk to him <laughs> which I just find to be a little bit less creepy and a little bit more like cheesy but it's kind of interesting because in a way it reminds me a little bit of like death note but like with aliens instead or something because like this young boy this teenage boy he's like the only one in the world that knows about the aliens because these other people that have been infected by these like alien parasites it's completely like taken over their body whereas like with him it's only taken up his hand so like he can still be his own person and then the alien is like in his hand and there's all these like murders that are happening in his town and like around the world and he knows Knows that it's the aliens but he's the only one who knows so he feels like he has some kind of responsibility to the world to like let the world know about the aliens but then his little alien on his hand is like no you're not gonna tell anyone about us and I don't know it was interesting it just wasn't exactly what I was expecting I think I'm probably gonna give this one around like a three and a half stars I am still interested in continuing with the series which is probably a good thing because I actually already bought the second volume when I was out in Seattle at that manga store so like I do have the second volume so like I'm glad that I still want to continue it just wasn't as good as I was hoping it would be I think and then this morning I read the first volume of I hear the sunspot and like oh my god my freaking heart it took me about 35 minutes to read this one this morning and this one is a story about a boy who has a hearing disability it's really unfortunate because he got this like fever when he was like a really young teenager and he actually lost his hearing so he could hear before and now he's really hard of hearing he's not completely deaf at least not yet but he still struggles with hearing but he's really good at reading lips and so that's kind of like how he's been getting by. He doesn't really know sign language either. And in this story, it is kind of like a boy's love romance, but it's definitely a slow burn. It's really just about how these two form an unlikely friendship because he says that he will take notes for him in class because he's hard of hearing. Like he'll be taking notes for him in class and in return, the boy will bring him like lunches every day. And so it's so cute because like they just start to develop this friendship because of the situation. And like these two characters were absolutely everything. Like they were so fucking cute. I I just really appreciated the story in this first volume. I thought the story was so beautiful and hard hitting and I feel like both of these characters are already so well fleshed out just after one volume. So like I gave this five stars. It's definitely a new favorite. I cannot wait to continue in this series. Like I thought this was so freaking good and so emotional and beautiful. And then the next volume that I read was Happiness Volume 1 and I'm so excited to let you know that I loved this. And you know as I mentioned this is from the same manga author as Blood on the Track. So the art style is you know very similar to that of that book and I I feel like what this author does so well for me is the expressions, like the characters facial expressions. I feel like he's really able to convey so much without too much dialogue. You know, like he's really good at writing the facial expressions and you know exactly how that character's feeling based on the way they're reacting to things. But this one is really interesting. You know, we're following this young boy who has been really bullied by a lot of the kids in his school. There's like a popular group of kids that are just like kind of taking advantage of him and being like, you have to go and get us snacks and like coffee every day. And then this boy who's been bullied by all these kids, he's going to return a DVD like really late at night, like 1130. And then he gets a 
attacked by this girl who is, you know, very clearly a vampire. And then when she's like literally going to kill him, she's like, do you want to be like me or do you want to die? And then he's like, what? Like, I want, I don't want to die. And so I think she like turns him into a vampire that night. And then after he goes to the hospital, after this attack, like weird things start happening to him. Like he's starting to feel like his body's changing. I don't know. It's really interesting so far. I loved it. I'm giving this first volume five stars. Like I cannot wait to continue in the series to see where it goes. I'm just already invested. I think the characters are really interesting and well done. And I'm loving the art style in general. Like I just think it's really interesting. Like this author just knows how to keep me flipping the pages. I'm so excited about this vampire horror. Like I'm really glad that I ended up loving this as much as I was hoping to. All right, now is the time we are going to pick the next three that I shall be reading. Let's see what's it gonna be. Oh, it was like glitching for a second. I was like, what? Okay, Love Nest. All right, so this is Love Nest. This is once again, another boys love manga. I didn't realize that I put so much boys love in here, but this is another boys love manga. I don't really know anything else about this one. So I'm curious to read it. I've had this one sitting on my shelf for a while now, actually. Let's see what the next thing will be. Oh my god, I thought we were gonna get erased. Okay, we have Chainsaw Man. So this is the first volume of Chainsaw Man. This is one that I am so nervous and so curious to read because I really don't know if this one's gonna be my thing or not, but I thought for the sake of this video, it might as well be worth trying something like this. I really don't even know what this one's about. Like, I don't even know genre-wise. Like, is this one fantasy? Like, I'm not entirely sure. It just says we follow a poor young man who will do anything for money, even hunting down devils with his pet devil, Pochita. I have no idea. I have no idea what to expect. Like, am I gonna love this? Am I gonna hate this? I don't know. All right, and let's see what the third one is gonna be. <laughs> okay, send them a farewell gift. Okay, so the next one is gonna be send them a farewell gift for the last time. I believe this one is a standalone. I could be wrong, but this one, you guessed it, is another boys love romance. It looks like this one is also published from Tokyo Pop, so it makes me wonder if it's gonna be similar to those first two that I read. But this one was honestly a cover buy for me when I was in Seattle recently, when I went to that manga store, because I was like, wow, this is stunning. I just loved the art just from the cover, and it was actually wrapped in plastic when I got it, so I haven't even really like flipped through this yet. This is really exciting that these three are the next three, because I don't really have any idea what any of these are about. <laughs> this afternoon, I do have a doctor's appointment that I'm going to. It's just like a routine annual visit kind of thing, so it's nothing crazy. But after I go to the doctor's office, I might actually hit up a coffee shop on the way home because I really need coffee to get through this afternoon. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks, you too. It's almost four o'clock in the afternoon. I've been reading for just shy of seven hours now. I'm at six hours and 51 minutes of reading and I'm halfway through the video because I've already read 12 manga. But you know what's so crazy is that when you look at this stack, it doesn't look like that much, right? Because I've read 12, but looking at the stack of the next 12 that I have to get through, like what the heck? All of the big manga is still remaining. So it's like, yeah, I've read 12 of them in less than seven hours, but something tells me that these next ones are gonna take me a lot longer to read because they're so much longer. I mean, looking at the stack of books that I have left to finish, I only have about five of them here on the top that are on the shorter side still. And then the rest of them are pretty lengthy manga. So like, I'm really hoping I can pull some of these next so that I can start to get through the longer ones and not save all of those for the end. But anyways, it's been a good afternoon. I went to the doctor. The doctor's appointment went fine. I did get coffee from one of my favorite coffee shops on the way home and I drank that so fast. Like I literally drank it so fast. Now I'm feeling all 
buzzed, you know, the feeling you get after you drink coffee super fast. But anyways, I did want to update you that I read Chainsaw Man. I decided to start with this one instead and not one of these because I started this while I was at the doctor's office and I didn't want to be like reading smut potentially in a doctor's office. So I started with this one. This one I was able to read in about 20 minutes and I'm so sorry to say this, but this was definitely not for me. Like I think I'm giving this one two stars. And in this story, we're following this young boy. I don't know exactly how old he's supposed to be, but he's very poor. He's in a position where he's literally going to be doing anything for money. He's like literally selling his organs and shit. Like it's bad. And one of the jobs that he does is like hunting down devils. But then he also has this devil for a pet. And he always told the pet, he's like, if anything ever happens to me, I want you to like use my body as a host or something. And I think he does die is what happens at the beginning of this. And then the pet comes and like uses his body as a host and like brings him back to life. But like the devil's inside of him now, I think. I don't know. Not only was this a little bit outside of my comfort zone, because I don't typically read stuff that leans more fantasy like this so I kind of knew that this might not be my thing, but I wanted to give it a go anyways. And not only was it kind of hard to follow this story at times, like just the storytelling in general, it was hard to know what was going on for me. I wasn't the biggest fan of the artwork in this either, and the characters just felt very one-dimensional to me. But also like, dude, is this book literally written for 13-year-old boys? Like, I do not understand. This character, because he's a teenage boy, apparently he's just obsessed with wanting to touch some titties. Like, he's literally just like, I want to touch some boobs. Like, that's a direct quote from this character. And then a few pages later, he says, I can forgive some craziness as long as she's pretty. The issue is how am I gonna touch those boobs? And I'm like, is this kid fucking for real? I mean, to be fair, I don't really know who the audience for Chainsaw Man is supposed to be. Like, is this supposed to be written for children? Is this supposed to be written for adults? I don't really know. I mean, it is kind of like graphically violent, so I would assume that this is a story that's for adults, but like, I don't know. This was just not my thing. The main character was so obnoxious, I couldn't stand it. It felt so insta-love. It's like the second he saw a girl who was nice to him, he's like, oh my god, I love her. It was just very much not for me, so we'll be moving on. The next one that I ended up reading was Love Nest. One of the guys in this book is an architect and they decide to live together because he needs to be saving money to eventually get his own place. But the guy who's an architect, a lot of the times he's like working from home and he's kind of a slob, you know, and the other guy's getting sick of him. He's like, you need to clean up after yourself. Like, what the fuck? They also end up making some kind of deal to become drinking buddies at the end of the night. And this romance was pretty good. It took me about 45 minutes to read this one. I think I'm probably going to give it four stars though, because even though the beginning was a little bit cringy, I was like, yeah, I don't know if I'm into it. And one of the guys was just pissing me off like the architect guy I thought he was so annoying at the beginning But these characters really started to grow on me and you know I'm a huge fan of the roommates to lovers trope like it's one of my favorites So it definitely had that going for it I also love the gay for you trope because one of these characters he thinks that he's straight and like this is his first time Experiencing like romantic attraction to a man So like I always love that trope too And then it also has the trope of like one of them having to take care of the other one when they're sick Which is another trope that I just genuinely really love I'm also so dumb because I thought that this one was a standalone, but no, it's actually the first book in a series. I should have realized because there's literally a one on the spine and on the front cover. And do keep in mind that both of these boy love mangas are 18 plus because they are very graphic with the sex. Like there's a lot of on-page nudity happening in these. And so then I ended up reading Send Them a Farewell Gift for the Last Time. This title is a mouthful. This one, it took me like 35 minutes to read. I feel like I could have read this quicker, but I was just getting so distracted. Like I could not focus on the words in this one. This is another boys love romance where they also happen to be roommates. Like I feel like the fact that I read these back to back is doing a disservice to this book because I couldn't help but compare them because the storylines were so similar. But something that I wasn't the biggest fan of in this one is that we're actually following these two guys who are roommates but they've recently broken up and they're not together anymore and so they're exes but it's supposed to be like an exes to lovers again kind of story. I don't know like their situation just felt very toxic to me. I wasn't really a fan of the, the main protagonist ex-boyfriend because he just felt very toxic and like he was one of those characters who just thinks that every problem that they have can be resolved with sex and I was just like that's really annoying. I also just wasn't the biggest fan of like the characterization in this book like I just didn't really care what was happening and so unfortunately this one ended up being a two star for me as well. I don't know if I would have enjoyed this one more if I hadn't just read it after Love Nest but I definitely preferred Love Nest. I preferred the relationship and the characters and the story a lot more in this one compared to this one which is you know truly unfortunate but it is what it is. It does feel so good though to be at the halfway point with this video already. Like, I'm really excited about this. I think so far my top three favorites have to be Happiness, The Promised Neverland, and I Hear the Sunspot. I've also been thinking quite a bit about A Home Far Away. Like, I do think this one is gonna leave such a long-lasting impression on me, so this one would definitely be in my top five. All right, so let's go ahead and spin for the next three to see what I'm gonna be reading next. So let's go ahead and spin. Ah, oh, so nervous. Let's go. <laughs> oh my god. 
Okay, I thought it was gonna go to New York, New York, but no, it went to the Yukaz's bias. And if you're wondering, this one is one of the shorter ones. Like, what the heck? It's literally gonna save all the long ones for last, isn't it? Don't get me wrong, though. This is one that I am so excited to read. This one's called the Yakuza's Bias, and this is one that I've been really interested in because as a K-pop fan, a lot of people have recommended this book to me because of the K-pop elements of this. I don't really know too much about this manga other than the fact that we're following this guy who's, like, basically a Japanese gangster. Like, I don't really know. It says he's a top lieutenant in the feared outfit underworld of this Japanese underworld, and it says he's never had time for hobbies until the boss's only daughter drags him to a K-pop concert, and he sees the guy in the K-pop group, and then he becomes obsessed with this guy in the K-pop group. <laughs> and so it's about his bias in a K-pop group. Like, I can't wait. I've been so excited to read this just because I think it's gonna be so fun. So I'm actually really excited that this one's next, but like, okay, come on. I need one of the longer ones. Let's go. Don't do me dirty this time. <laughs> oh, oh, <gasps> yes. Oh. Finally, yay. Okay, I'm very excited. The next one that it rolled for me is Alice in Borderland Volume 6. Alice in Borderland is a series that I am currently absolutely obsessed with. I'm a huge fan of the show as well. Alice in Borderland is a horror series that involves this game. I always compare it to Squid Game whenever I talk about this because it's a game where these characters are getting put into a life or death situation with every single game they're participating in. And I think the series is so much fun. So I'm so excited to continue with it. And this is one of the thicker ones. So I'm glad that I finally picked one. What will be the third thing? Ooh. I'm so excited to see. Give me something good. <laughs> Okay, My Summer of You. Okay, so this is My Summer of You. This is volume three. This one is one of the thicker ones as well, so I'm glad that I'll finally get to it. And this one is a boys love manga series that I've been reading. I read the first two volumes. I loved the first volume of this so much. Like it was a five stars, one of my new favorites. And then the second volume I thought was just okay. So I've been really curious actually to read this third volume to see how it goes. The thing that I love most though about this boys love manga is the fact that both of them are obsessed with film. Like that's kind of why there's like a little film strip here on the cover but both of them are really obsessed with like movies and film which is something that I really relate to because I'm also obsessed with movies and film but what I really like about these volumes too is that the first volume took place the summer that they were still in high school and then the second volume took place during their first summer as college students and so I'm thinking this third volume it says it's following them in their second year of college during the summer so I'm excited to check this one out too Ooh, I'm guessing it'll take me a little bit more time to get through these next ones but I'm so excited to read these next Last night, I finished the next three manga. I'm now sitting at nine hours and 20 minutes, which is pretty shocking considering I've read 15 of the 24. I only have nine left and I'm only at nine hours and 20 minutes. Like I would say so far, I'm absolutely crushing it. So last night I ended up starting with Alice in Borderland volume six. I was pretty surprised that with this one, it took me a little bit over an hour to read this. It took me maybe like an hour and five minutes or so. It's really cool because we follow these characters who live in Borderland and Borderland Borderland is this place where they get sent to where they have to compete against each other in these games and they have to survive the game in order to stay in Borderland. It's really cool because after they win these games, they get this visa that like tells them how many days they have left to live until they have to play another game. And it's really cool because the games in this world are all based off of a deck of cards. So like depending on what deck of cards you get will determine what kind of game it'll be. And depending on the level of like if the cards one, two, three, or four or like a face card, that determines the level of difficulty with like the 
game. It's just such a cool series. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. Like, I just love it so much. I have seen the show in its entirety. I've seen season one and season two. Right now, where I'm at in the book, there are some things happening that were happening in season two of the show that I just love so much. Like, I think this is so well written. It's so crazy because since I've already seen the show, like, I kind of know what's going to be happening, but this is one of the most solid adaptations I've ever seen because the show is just spot on with the adaptation. Like, I've never seen such perfect casting and the story and the writing is like, it's all the same and it's so good. So I ended up giving this volume four stars. I had a really great time reading this one. And then the next one that I read was the Yakuza's Bias. I ended up reading this one in about 45 minutes or so. And dude, this was absolutely fucking hilarious. Like, I loved this. Like, whoever recommended me this because I'm a K-pop fan, like, thank you. This would have never been on my radar otherwise. And this was literally so delightful. Like, I was kicking and screaming. It was so much fun to read this. In this story, we're following this guy named Ken, who is kind of like a Japanese mob kind of dude. Like, he has all these dangerous men working for him. And then one night, the boss's daughter drags him to a K-pop concert, and he's kind of like, oh, like, I don't know about this. And then there's this guy in the group, and his name is June, and he just gets absolutely obsessed with him. Like, he just falls in love with him as an idol, and he's like, June is my bias, and he gets really into this group. And the group is called MNW, which, by the way, I just find so hilarious because it's like three letters, kind of like BTS. Like, I feel like there's so many BTS references in this. There was even a point where he was like, all the blood, sweat, and tears they put into their performance. And I was like, blood, sweat, and tears? Because Blood, Sweat, Tears is a BTS song. Like, I feel like there were so many references to BTS and it made my heart so happy. Like, the amount of times that I tabbed this, you would not believe. Like, I was just having the time of my life. I almost wanted to tab, like, every single page. Because what was happening was just absolutely hilarious. Like, the way he would start to, like, fight with other people about, like, who was, like, the most talented in the group. And then he would, like, have the young girls show him, like, how to trade, like, bias cards. Like, he's like, how many albums do I have to buy to pull my bias? And she was, like, trying to show him online that you can like trade with other fans. Oh my gosh, I just think if you're a K-pop fan, this is an absolute must read. This was so fucking funny. This was so on the nose with pointing out the like hilarious things about fan culture and things like that. It was so entertaining. And to see a man like this, who's just so like dangerous mob dude, just go absolutely ape shit over an idol. It was just like the best thing ever. I gave this five stars. Like I loved it. I actually am so close to ordering the second book like right away just because like I need more of this in my life. It was so cute. And then I ended up reading My Summer of You, Volume 3. So, you know, as I mentioned, I was a huge fan of the first volume, and then the second volume I found to be just okay. I think I gave the second one, like, three stars. But this one was so freaking cute. I think I'm giving this one like four and a half stars. I really liked this one a lot. I feel like what was really lacking in the second book was that I felt like the plot just kind of like disappeared in the second book and it was just more about these two characters and their romance and I was just like, okay, like, I don't know. I just needed more from the second volume. But with this one, I really liked this one. I thought the plot was really interesting. I liked that. It felt more like they were trying to keep it a secret from their friends, but their friend group was really interesting. And I also liked that they were opening up more to each other about their past and like their history. And you got to see more about their relationship with their parents and like I don't know there was just a lot more happening in this one and I really liked it a lot. I was actually also able to read this one in about 45 minutes which surprised me just considering the length of this one I thought it would take me longer to get through it but I feel like with most of this one there's a lot of pages where there's like not a lot of dialogue so it is pretty easy to get through it at least a lot faster than I was originally thinking it would be but this ended up being so cute like it was such a great manga to read like right before bed it just made me feel all warm and cozy inside. All right so now I only have the nine manga remaining. Do we think that I could finish all nine of these today? I feel like I'm gonna try to do my best. So let's see what we're gonna be reading first. I'm hoping to get more of the longer ones out of the way. So let's hope that I can get one of those. Ooh. <laughs> oh my gosh, of course. Of course. So we get Blood on the Tracks, which is probably the shortest one in this whole thing. So we have Blood on the Tracks Volume 15. This is one of my favorite series of all time. Like, I'm 15 volumes deep in this series. This one is a horror manga series where we're following this mom and this son who have this really strange bond. It's kind of like giving very much Bates Motel vibes. These volumes are also like so short and they're so easy to read. Usually I can read one of these in like 10 to 15 minutes, no problem. So like, that's hilarious that I pulled this one first. Let's see what's next. Oh. <laughs> oh 
it just barely went over. Okay, New York, New York is definitely one of the longer ones. Like this is one of the ones I was really hoping I would pull soon because it looks like it's on the lengthier side. This is one that I'm very excited to read. I actually just picked up this book at a half price books recently because it sounds like it could be interesting. It takes place in New York in the 1990s. And it says in this story, we're following a police officer who has gone to great lengths to prevent his coworkers, family and friends from finding out that he's gay. Then he like meets this guy, I guess, that makes him want to like change everything about his life. So I'm really curious about this because I love the idea of a 1990s New York setting. Okay, and let's spin a third time and see what the third read of the afternoon will be. Oh my gosh, Death Note. Okay, I'm very excited about Death Note Volume 3. This one is also one of the lengthier ones, so I was hoping to get this one done soon. Death Note is a series that I have been really obsessed with. I've only read the first two volumes so far. This one is the third volume, and this is another one that these collections are so huge because I do think there actually is two volumes within this collection, but I'm just gonna be reading it as if it counts as one. Death Note is a series that I would highly recommend pretty widely, like universally, because I think it's so interesting and so entertaining. I think Death Note is like the perfect recommendation for any like thriller or horror fans just because the concept in this series is so cool. In this story we're following this young teenage boy named Light and he discovers this Death Note where if he writes the name of any person in his Death Note then they will die. And so Light, he is making it his goal to use this for good and try to take out all of the evil in the world using the Death Note. The story is just so good, it's so interesting, I can't wait to continue continue with it today. <sighs> All right, so I'm going to go and read these three and then I will come back at you with thoughts when I have them. Hello, some hours have passed. I have now been reading for 12 hours and three minutes. So as you can probably guess, it took me quite a bit of time to get through these three volumes. I blame Death Note, to be honest. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I started with New York, New York. It took me around 45 minutes to read this one, but to be honest, it's because by the time I started getting to the end, I was just skimming because I did not care. Like, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think I actually have the first manga ever that I'm giving one star. I just really was not a fan of this. And this one, you know, as I mentioned, it's like a boys love manga that takes place in New York in the 1990s. I really thought this could be my thing, but oh my gosh, the romance was so not developed very well. Like it was so insta love. It's like they met right away and this guy was just like, oh my God, like he's the man of my dreams. But then he proceeds to, you know, treat him like shit, like almost to the point where he's abusive, both verbally and physically. I was just not a fan of this main protagonist at all. Like he definitely had some issues where he was like so frustrated with himself for being gay that he he definitely took it out on his partner and he was like trying to hide all the time with him. It was just in a way that was so yikes and like ick, like they definitely gave me the ick. I also didn't like the fact that the love interest, he literally looked like he was drawn to be so much younger. Like why did he look like he was a teenager? Like I know they're only supposed to be like about three years apart. I think the age difference is only like 25 and 22 years old or something like that. But the guy who was 22 years old, like why does he look so young? Like this looks like a freaking teenager to me. <laughs> and I was just not a fan of this because of the insta love. And then I was also not a fan of this because the way he treated him, it was awful. It was borderline abusive and I just was not here for it. It was just really sad, you know, because these characters have been through a lot of trauma and they've had really hard lives, but that does not excuse the way that this man was treating this other guy. Like I was not here for it. So this had to be one star, which is a huge bummer because this is one that I was really excited to read. So like, oh my gosh, how disappointing. And then I ended up reading Blood on the Tracks volume 15 and this this one took me a little bit longer to read than it typically takes me to read the Blood on the Tracks volumes. I mean, it took me about 25 minutes to read, so not super long, but I think it's because this one included quite a bit more story than the last few volumes of Blood on the Tracks has included, and I actually really liked that about this. Like, I ended up giving this one five stars. I loved this volume. I feel like this one is actually one of the best Blood on the Tracks volumes that we've had in a while. Like, the last few that he's published, I've been like, mm, okay, like, I don't know, the story's just kind of like falling apart and I wasn't caring as much, but this just brought me right back back and made me fall right back in love with the series. Like, I just think this one was so well done. I loved how in this volume in particular, we got a lot more like backstory on his mother and more about like her upbringing and it kind of made us understand her character better. But also the ending of this volume, I was like, bitch, what? Like, what do you mean? And so now I'm even more excited to read volume 16 because I can't wait to see where this series is going. And I loved it. I gave it five stars. And then the last volume that I just read was Death Note volume three. And like, dude, this book was my ever this book ended up taking me more than an hour and a half just to get through this because you know as I mentioned there are two you know volumes essentially in this one thing they're just 
combined in this collection. It took me an hour just to get through the first volume essentially, and then it took me 30 to 45 minutes to get through the second one. I'm not gonna lie, I started skimming because I was so freaking bored. It sucks because I was just mentioning how much I love this series and the concept in this series, but this volume in particular is so freaking dense that I couldn't stand it. There were just so many words per page, there was nothing really happening, it was just a lot of men talking back and forth with each other. You know, a lot of this story is them trying to figure out who could be behind these death notes, right? Like they're trying to figure out how it works, they're trying to understand it, but I feel like this book went about it in such a different way from the other volumes, because the first volume I thought was really fun and really interesting because we're just following this teenage boy as he's figuring out how to use the death note, it was fun, it was different, but then the second volume, how I started to feel in the last one, it started to feel a bit more like police procedural like detective work investigative work and it started to get a little bit boring like I don't know I thought it started to get a little bit boring and then this volume like holy shit this was so boring it was so slow it was just like non-stop talks back and forth about like well if he was gonna do this then like anticipating his next step and it was just so boring I feel like this entire novel is really told from the, like the police point of view or like the investigative point of view and I just don't care that much like, I just feel like with this volume it was just very slow it was so boring it was so dense like there were just so many words words per page. It was like my brain was shutting down. It's like in order to even understand this, you have to have like really big brain energy and really be paying attention and really be in the mood, I guess, for something like this, which clearly I just wasn't in the mood for this right now. Like my brain is already feeling like scrambled eggs after reading so many manga in a row. I will admit that the last little section in this book did start to get a little bit more interesting and action packed, but honestly, like by that point, I just didn't really care as much anymore. I also just despise the way that the women are written in this manga universe. Like I hate it. There's only really one female character character that's a big character in this book and it's this girl who's like obsessed with light. She's like this teenage girl and like all she cares about is wanting to go on a date with him and being with him and she's so in love with him and he's just like yeah like you're annoying like I don't even know why you're still here and it's just like obnoxious like I don't like the way that she's written I don't like her character I just it's annoying so I think I'm gonna give this one two stars which feels generous like I know I should feel like I should just give this one star because I don't have that many great things to say about it. I'm just so disappointed to be feeling this way about Death Note because now I don't know if I want to continue in this series or not and that makes me sad. All right so out of the six manga that I have remaining. I have three of them <laughs> that are still on the lengthier side down here, and then I have three of them that are a little bit smaller up here. So let's see what we get next. All right, here we go. Let's spin the wheel to see what the next read is going to be. Oh my gosh, yes. So we got Killing Stocking. Okay, this is one of the longer ones, but this is one that I've been highly anticipating reading this entire time because this is Killing Stocking. This is volume three. This is a series that I am currently really obsessed with. I don't even know how I would describe this series, to be honest. I feel like it's kind of like a dark romance. Both of these characters are incredibly toxic, but there's definitely some romantic elements to this story. One of the guys is a killer. The other guy is a stalker. They're both creepy and weird in different ways, but there's just something about this series that I can't put it down. And if you are wondering, yes, this one actually is manhwa. I don't think it's actually manga because it's Korean and the story's in color, you know, and it's read forward, kind of like a regular book. But I decided to include it in this video anyways because I'm currently obsessed with this series and I was needing an excuse to read the next one, so here we are. All right, what's the next thing gonna be? Ooh, yes. All right, so we have Real Account. This is one that I've been highly anticipating. I've had this one sitting on my shelf for a few months now. And this is one that I'm excited about because I've heard people compare this to Squid Game. I don't really understand how this works, but it says that there's this newest social networking service called Real Account. It says 10,000 other people get sucked into the Real Account zone where they have become players in a series of deadly games. I don't know, because it involves deadly games, I'm excited to check this one out. All right, and what's the next book gonna be? Oh my gosh, this wheel has gotten so small. Ooh, <sighs> Ascendance of a Bookworm. All right, how exciting is that? This one is Ascendance of a Bookworm. I literally don't know anything about this other than that my friend Gavin actually read this book for his video and he ended up really enjoying this manga. And so I just decided to add it to my TBR for this video. I was able to pick up this copy from the library and I think it sounds cute. So this book genre wise, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's a little bit of a light fantasy. It says we're following a certain college girl who is reincarnated as the child of a soldier in a world with few books and a low literacy rate. No matter how much she wants to read, there are no books around her. And so it's her goal to become a librarian in this world. I don't know. It sounds like it's going to be a cute time. So these will be the next three that I read. I feel like all three of these are going to have such different vibes. Oh my gosh. Wow. The universe really said you're going to save some of the thickest ones for last, didn't it? I 
I've been thinking about you all the time. Racing through my mind, speeding like the autobahn. I've been searching everywhere, but the nigga up to now. I'm with your point, I can't make time even when I'm on the grind. I hold up. Now I just call you. Tone minus your devil to chicken, got you dull. All my days, I be on the way. Cooked on Haji, my baby. Everything is gonna be okay, that's my lady. Tasha, they don't mind again, and you'll just call me money. We on different continents, you know that my coach. Okay, hello. Some more hours have passed. It is now about 9 o'clock at night. I've been reading for 14 hours and three minutes and I have finished the next three volumes. So the first one that I read was Killing Stalking Volume 3. I read this one in about 55 minutes. It did take me a minute to get through this one. I mean, it is on the thicker side. And this is one that I feel very torn about because I was a huge fan of the first volume in this series and then I was a pretty big fan of the second volume as well. But with this volume, I just don't really know how I felt about this one. I feel like for the most part, this volume in particular just made me very uncomfortable to read and I'm just not really sure like where the direction of this story is going. These characters are just so toxic and they're genuinely so fucked up and it's really hard to root for either of them but I also do like the kind of mystery aspect to this book with like the detectives and them working behind the scenes to try to figure out like what's going on. So I'm kind of torn about this one. I'm not gonna lie. I think I'm probably gonna give this one like three and a half stars. I'm still curious to see where this series is going but I'm just not as excited about this one as I was about the first two. So like, I don't know, I'm feeling middle of the road on Killing Stalking right now. And then I ended up reading the first volume of Real Account. I actually attempted to read this while I was on the treadmill at the gym. I've actually never tried to read manga before while I was at the gym, but it actually worked out fine. It was only triggering my vertigo like a little bit towards the end because I was getting a little like motion sickness trying to like read while I was walking. It took me about 35 minutes to read this one, but I was able to read this one in its entirety while I was on the treadmill. So that was pretty cool. And this one is so comparable to Squid Game. Like everybody who compared this to Squid Game is absolutely right. It's definitely like a mix of Squid Game and Black Mirror, I feel like. It's just so cool because in this universe, there's this app called Real Account that kind of like syncs up all your social media into one app. And then these 10,000 people get sucked into this world that's called Real Account. And they tell them that they're gonna have to play a game and that it's gonna be a deadly game. And it all has to do with like how many followers they have and like how well liked they are, which definitely reminds me quite a bit of Black Mirror. Right when they get sucked into the game, they said, okay, well, the 10,000 of you that are here, just so you know, not only will you die in this game if you lose, but then everybody who follows you on your social media will also die with you. And so they give the public, like, the opportunity to unfollow them, and all of these people are, like, losing all their followers left and right because it's getting live-streamed to the world, like, these games. And then they also said if you hit zero followers, like, if nobody's following you anymore, then you're automatically gonna die. So, like, you need to have followers in order to, like, stay alive. It was just so interesting the way that this book kind of shows how toxic and cruel social media can be and how sometimes people can be so fake when they're online and just really not genuine. Like, oh my god, it was so interesting. I really love this. I gave it five stars. It's definitely like one of my favorite manga that I've read for this whole video. Like, I can't wait to continue in this series because it's definitely reminding me of a lot of my favorite things like Black Mirror, Squid Game, even Alice in Borderland. Like, it has all of those vibes. I think it's really interesting too that our main protagonist that we're following, he has just lost his parents recently. Like, his parents have recently died and it's just him and his sister and his sister is like the one person who's supporting him it's like the only follower that he has going into the game but he doesn't want his sister to die so he's like trying to get her to unfollow him i was really fascinated by this i don't know i'm having a great time with it so it was five stars for me and then i just finished reading ascendance of a bookworm i read this one in about 30 minutes and this one ended up being so cute and so wholesome so in this story we're following this character who dies by accident after she gets crushed by books. Like, all of the, her books fall on top of her and crush her. And then she, like, wakes up reincarnated as this little girl in this completely different universe. And, dude, this little girl is, like, the cutest thing. Like, she's freaking adorable. Like, one of the cutest little girls I've read in a manga in such a long time. But it's so cute because she wakes up in this, like, alternate reality where there are no books in this world. And she's completely shocked because she's, like, the biggest bookworm of all time. And so she's just living as this little girl in this family. She's trying to figure out how she can get her her hands on some books, but she's quickly discovering that in this universe, there's not a lot of people who can read and even write. And so books are like one in a million, like they're hard to come by. And so she decides that she's gonna like make books herself. 
Like she's trying to figure out how she can make paper and like how she can do all the things to make books. This book was just so wholesome. It was so cute. It had really cute characters. Like I liked all the characters in their family. Like it was just adorable. I would definitely read more from this series, even though I'm not a big like fantasy person. It felt a little bit fantasy at times, more like historical, I guess, and kind of like medieval vibes. Like I don't really know, but I really liked this. I gave it four stars. I thought it was so adorable. All right, so I only have the three manga remaining. I thought we could spin the wheel for the last time just to see which one of these I should read first. I mean, I would really love to finish all three of these tonight, but because it's already 9.30 at night, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish all three of these tonight. So I would love to read at least one more of these tonight and then maybe save the last two for tomorrow. But I thought that it would be fun to spin the wheel just one more time so I can see which book I should read first tonight. Let's do it for the final time. Very excited. Oh, okay, fly me to the moon. <laughs> Once again, it has chosen one of these smaller ones and it has saved some of the longer ones for the final two, but you know what, that's fine, I'll take it. So Fly Me to the Moon is one that I know absolutely nothing about. I think it might be a little bit of like a sci-fi romance. I don't know, on the back here it says, is she an alien, a mood goddess, or something else? Since she insists on marrying him, NASA will have plenty of chances to find out. I don't really know what to expect with this one, but I guess I'm gonna be starting with this one tonight. And then the only other two that I have left for this video is Summertime Rendering. This is another one that I have no idea what this one's gonna be like, like genre wise, I feel like it might be kind of like mystery or horror. So in the story, it just says that we're following this protagonist who he returns to his hometown to go to the funeral of his childhood friend who recently passed away. And it says, little does he know that it is the beginning of a summer full of mystery and horror. Very intrigued with this. Like I'm so excited to read this one. And then the last one that I have is Erased. And this is the first volume in a series as well. This is another one that genre wise, I'm not entirely sure what this one is either, but I think this one's a bit of a like mystery, maybe Maybe with some sci-fi elements as well. We're following a protagonist who's struggling toward his dream of being a successful manga artist. It says that he has this condition that seems to only make his life worse. This phenomenon sends him back minutes in time to relive moments again and again. But then one day everything changes, a terrible incident alters his life, and it sends him 18 years into the past. And so it says he's in the body of his boyhood self and he encounters his old classmate, a girl who was kidnapped and murdered when he was a boy the first time around. Wow, this sounds like it's gonna be crazy. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to read these. It's pretty cool that I saved some of the more like mystery sci-fi sounding books for the very end. So I'm very excited. These are two that I've been excited to read this entire time. Like I've just been hearing such great things about these two mangas. So I can't wait. I hope we can end this video with a huge success. Hello, it is the next morning and I have finally finished reading all of the manga. So my final time for this video is actually 16 hours and 40 minutes. Like I can't believe I was able to read all 24 of them in 16 hours and 40 minutes. I don't know why I was genuinely thinking it would take me close to 24 hours to do this. So the fact that I achieved this challenge is so awesome. And I'm excited to let you know about the final three that I read for this video. So last night I did end up reading Fly Me to the Moon volume one. I wasn't really sure what I was expecting with this one, but basically Basically, we're following this young boy. His name is NASA, which is like really cute, but also like really dorky. I mean, I kind of love it. And one day he's like walking across the street and then this girl just jumps in and like saves his life when like this car is about to hit him. And he just like immediately insta love, falls in love with this girl. I think he's about like 14, maybe 13 years old at the time. I don't really know. And then we're following these characters like years later. Like he hasn't seen this girl in literally years and now he's 18 years old. He's living by himself. And she just like shows up on his doorstep and she's like, oh, we're gonna get married. And he's like, oh, what? <laughs> and then it's just about how they're like getting married. I don't know if it's because she's like an alien or she like needs his marriage for some reason. I'm not entirely sure what the reason is, but this one was cute. It was just very like insta love. It was like the second he saw her, he just fell like head over heels for her. And he was like, I will do literally anything for this woman. And it was cute, but it was just a little bit cheesy. And I didn't really understand like what was going on. So I gave this one three stars. It was okay. I probably would continue on in this series, but I don't have like a lot of high hopes for this. And this one only took me about 24 minutes to read. And then I ended up reading Summertime Rendering. I did end up reading this one last night 
night as well. And this one did take me about an hour to read, but this one was so interesting. And I was correct that this one is more of like a mystery horror vibe. So we're following this guy who's going back to his like island small hometown because he's going to the funeral of his best friend, which is this girl on the cover here. And she's recently died under like suspicious circumstances. I don't know if it's like they thought she had killed herself, but then they just did the autopsy and they found all these like markings around her neck. So they think that she was actually murdered. Then it's really interesting because as this character starts to uncover the truth of like what's really happening here, he gets stuck in like a time loop where he has to repeat the same day over again. There's also like this really creepy element to this story with these like doppelgangers. And like, I don't know about you, but the idea of a doppelganger is genuinely one of the most creepy and terrifying things to me. And so the fact that this series includes that, I thought this was so interesting. In this volume, I ended up giving this one five stars. Like I'm obsessed with this. I think the ending got a little bit confusing for me. Like I'm not gonna lie, by the ending, I was kind of like, wait, what? But the general vibes were just very creepy. I'm very into the story and the plot and the characters. I love like the island vibes. Like the setting of this is really fun. And this just has so many things in like horror and mystery that I really look for. And I'm so excited. I actually ended up already getting the second volume for my library. I just had a good feeling that this one could be something that I would enjoy. So I'm so glad I already picked up the second volume because I'm like, I need to continue with this right away. So this was five stars. This was definitely one of my favorites that I read for this whole video. And then this morning, I finally read Erased Volume 1. I saved this one for last and I'm kind of glad I did because it took me a little bit longer to read this one. It took me about like an hour and 15 minutes to get through it. But as I mentioned last night, this one is really interesting. It's another kind of like mystery thriller horror kind of manga where we're following this character who's 29 years old, which like same, and he is working as a struggling, you know, manga artist. Like he wants to make manga, but his most recent one just isn't doing that well. Like, he's not able to sell the most recent manga that he's been working on. And he has this really weird condition where like he'll go back in time a few minutes before there's something that happens. And he thinks that it's happening to him because he's trying to prevent something awful from happening every time that he does it. Then something really catastrophic and crazy happens in his life that I will not spoil for you. And then after that moment, he goes back in time 18 years to when he was a little boy. And it's really fascinating because there's this like prominent story from when he was a kid about this girl in his class who went missing and was kidnapped and then killed. And so he's trying to go back in time to prevent her from being kidnapped or he at least that's what he assumes the reason is for why he went back 18 years in time to when he was a little kid. I just thought this was so uh, fascinating. I thought it was so well done. I love the story already. I love the characters. I can't wait to read more in this series and try to figure out where the story is going, but I am so intrigued by this. I thought it was so well done. So I think I'm gonna end up giving this one around like four and a half stars. I don't know if it was like quite a five star for me, but it was still really great. Like I had such a good time with this. And so, oh my gosh, I can't believe the manga video is complete. I feel like my brain honestly has turned a little bit into scrambled eggs after trying to read so many manga in such a short amount of time. But I'm so glad that I decided to do this video challenge. I will have my final ranking on the screen from like my most favorite to my least favorite. Something that I think is really interesting is that the shortest it took me to read a manga was about nine minutes and it was hyperventilation. But this one also ended up being like one of my least favorite that I read for this video. But then the one that ended up taking me the longest to get through was Death Note Volume 3. This one took me about an hour and 30 minutes or maybe even a little bit longer than that. And this one also ended up being one of my least favorites that I read for this entire video. Then my top five for this video, I think my number one for me personally would have to be the Yakuza's bias. I mean, I know I'm a little biased because I'm a K-pop girly. I think if you're also a huge K-pop fan, like this is an absolute must read. I was like giddy, like kicking my feet and shit, like having the time of my life reading this one. I think The Promised Neverland is definitely in my top five. I loved this so much more than I was expecting to and I cannot wait to continue on in this series. And then same with Real Account. Like this was so much fun. This is a perfect recommendation for fans of Squid Game or Alice in Borderland or Black Mirror. I'm so glad that this one made it into my top five and I'm so excited to continue with this one as well. And then I think Summertime Rendering, it has to be in my top five. Like this checked so many boxes for me with what I look for in a horror. It was so creepy. It was so interesting. I love like the time loop element and like the doppelgangers. Like it was creepy. It was weird and I'm here for it. And then I hear the sunspot. I think this one has to be in my top five because these two were absolutely precious. And this was definitely my favorite like boys love manga that I read for this whole video. I also feel like happiness and erased were so close to making it into my top favorites. Like I really love these and I can't wait to continue on in both of these series as well. I'm so glad that I found some new favorite manga from doing this video. You'll have to let me know if you have read any of the manga or any of the series that I'm reading in this video. Let me know what you think of them. And as always, please do recommend me any manga down below that you think that I could enjoy. I love when you guys give me good manga recommendations. I really appreciate it, you know, because I am 
pretty new to manga, so there are so many things that I haven't tried yet. And so I would appreciate all and any recommendations that you have for me. And thank you so much for watching as always, and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye!